everyone, please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to your host, Lindsay Broadhurst. from Isaiah, and to the right of me, I'm going to go through and introduce some guys, literally some guys, to you guys. <laughs> this is Anthony Morello. He's our associate multimedia producer. Hello, everyone. We have Chaz Russo, our director of creative services. Hi. <laughs> we have Marty Smith, our creative director. Good morning. And I'm Lindsay Broadhurst, our director of corporate events and communication. So today we're going to talk about brand storytelling through creative tech design. Um, we're going to show you some videos and things like that to keep it engaging, but we're also just going to jump right into it. All right, you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sure. All right, so to what extent does a brand have to go through today to draw people or wow people while staying true to a brand's standards? I'll take that one. Go ahead, Chaz. I'll start it off. Right. Um, I think one of the most important things to achieve that is um, for a brand to be authentic through and through. Um, for us working at IZ, it's knowing the brand completely, um, knowing what it does, knowing who it reaches, and in doing so to the fullest extent is capitalizing on that authenticity. People know when something's not real. People know when something's fake. I mean, look, current state of affairs, you can call fakeness from a mile away, whether you're watching news or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I think the most important thing to uh, seek out, realize, capitalize on is the authenticity of a brand. People don't want to be just sold something people want, whether it's lifestyle, whether it's feelings, emotions, whatever it is, is authenticity at the core, so. Yeah, I think that's true, like the brand is like actually what people feel about your product and your company and your, not just visual, but actually what you do and how you respond to them and yeah. um so our ceo ted murphy always asks for like the little bit of magic at the yeah. end after we create a logo or whatever it is he wants like so you need to like carry through and into your websites into your print material into how your employees feel about you as well yeah. so can your employees get behind it can your clients get behind it can your patrons get behind it um, it needs to be able to be a flag, a shield, a banner for whoever is involved. So, something that stands out, especially like um, with so many brands out there, it's like countless amount of brands, and they're all going to be trying to achieve that standard of, hey, we're going to create a logo, we're going to create a video, we're going to create all these things. But if you want to have that authentic feel, you have to go the extra mile and add something that's going to make that specific brand be separate from the rest. Yeah. Great. So how do you guys pull out um, the emotional element in your work? How do you pull that out? Well, I mean, I, I, what I do at IZ is just create videos left and right. And of course, we have to like tie in the emotion. It's very important to, as we were going in the first point, is understanding the brand. Like what type of emotion do you want to share? Um, you have to grab all the elements, including music, including what type of shots, the coloring. That all can definitely change what you're going to be perceiving as you're watching a video or anything that's related to that brand. So just you have to understand the brand and then kind of have a strategy to like what your message, what you want your message to be. And then once you add all those elements together and you have the perfect message, I think that's when it all works best. In addition to uh, that somewhat technical side of things that Anthony talked about, I think it's also important to believe in what you're actually working on. Like if you don't believe it, if you don't feel it, it's, it's, it's not gonna come through that way. Um, we all really enjoy working at IZ. It's a very creative, freeing environment, so it's really easy to get to that point and, and have that conveyed in a lot of the stuff that we work on, like some stuff is going to be trivial at times, some stuff is going to be, I hate to say it, a paycheck at times, but there's other stuff when you have the opportunity to really pour yourself and what you believe about what you're working on into it, it, it it's easy for it to come through at that point. I also think you can make your designs relatable so people can see them and like identify and have like a, a personal connection yeah. with things and like we just did a relaunch of our website, isaiah.com, and like hidden throughout, we've 
added little bits of flair and little bits of pop culture so that like you'll see one of the illustrations and like I won't give anything away because we'll show this site. We're, we're, bit, we're dating ourselves but, by our little pop culture. Oh yeah, they're real dated, fun. but. Um, so yeah, like just make them relatable and yeah. unique and. Yeah, I think a good benchmark too is if if you're having fun with it, if you like it, others, hopefully, are gonna like it. Too. <laughs> yeah, I've I've had pe people coming up to me. It's like, wait, is that reference from that movie? Yeah. Mm. And I've had other people who's like, I've seen all these things. I don't know if if this is actually yeah. connected to that. And I feel like it's also like telling a story. You know, um, we have this this website that's changed completely and in the background there's so much stuff going on that you're like kind of like intrigued to find out more about yeah. it and it makes you want to explore more like you yeah. took one step you took a second step all right what's more there what can i how it can pulls I people in yeah it, it really, does. really yeah. does not just our website but that kind of work it yeah i feel like it's like that's a great example though yeah so you guys are you know in school right now and you have a lot of passion projects a lot of your projects you probably formulate around what you're passionate about you know when you get into the you know real world and you're working for a company you know it can be hard to work on something if you don't feel passionate about it like you've just heard them all speak about so how do you guys balance your personal passions um, while working for Isaiah or any past examples that you have while working for another company of you know staying true to their style guide when you know, being given directive, but then also really trying to, you know, keep your passion in your projects? That's a good question. I would just say, like, try to give something new to them and and be, don't be afraid to explore, even though, you know, they might be strict with their standards and, like, uh, and give options. Like, that's what yeah. I think Chaz does super well is, like, here's a ton of things to choose from. And, like, and sometimes you don't get what you want out of that, but it definitely will steer you in the right direction. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> cultural reference, movie reference, um, movie Hitch with Will Smith, um, where he <laughs> deals with the various guys going on dates, and they've already got the date, and they're still worried. He's like, yo, yo, relax. You already got her to agree to go on a date with you. <laughs> like, when you work for a company, freelance or otherwise, they've hired you for you and the work that you do. They've already seen that. All you have to do is deliver at that point. So I think you can aim for all the way out there. And then if you need to scale back to adhere to brand standards at points, some, some companies are really strict with that. Some are a little more loose. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've already hired you for your work, for what you're capable of doing, for your style, for your aesthetic. Um, be strong in that. Have faith in yourself for that reason. And just deliver what you're capable of delivering. Yeah, believe in yourself, guys. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> Cheesy, but yeah, that's literally it. Um, yeah, again, like, I, I agree with Chaz and what Marty said. Um, you're gonna bump into, let's say, clients or your job or whatever person is asking for you, your work. You're gonna not always share that same exact vision. It's nearly impossible. If I say, you know, imagine a dog in your head, and everyone's going to be imagining different breeds, different sizes, different colors. German Shepherd. <laughs> Chihuahua. <laughs> but it could all happen like that. And that way, we're going to be sharing different visions. But the best thing you can do is give different options, like Chaz said. Yeah. Understand. Tell them that you want to share that vision. You want to kind of create something together. That way you have to work together. And working together is gonna be, things are gonna match, things are not gonna match, but here's different options. Let's try to make this work. Yeah, in a professional way, it's better to be overwhelming than underwhelming. Mm. You know, you wanna over deliver rather than under deliver. That's, it's a very simple concept, but it's true. I can remember, we'll, we'll hit on this a little more in a second, but when I was rebranding Isaiah almost two years ago, first meeting with Ted, I had like 50, like refined vector logo options to show him. And he was just like, the first pass, it wasn't even sketches, it was just, it, he just was kind of floored. So I don't know if you know Ted, Ted's our CEO. He gave us uh, a talk at nine this morning, right? Yeah. yeah, so whether you were there or not, that's Ted. But, <laughs> yeah. So how do you guys work through something when you, you have a client and they're giving you direction, you've presented all these ideas and the direction is, you, you totally don't believe in it or you're not wholeheartedly in on it. How do you work through that direction? I would say you, I mean, going back to it, you have to give options and, and include what they want in it. And at no point should you make what they want worse 
because that's what will be chosen. Like the, and All then the you'll, time. And then you'll hate it. But I had a friend, Kathleen, that did a, uh, like a project for a big bank in California. And she, <laughs> they wanted their logo to be a bear because California, but um, so <laughs> obviously. So anyway, at the time, browsers would stretch with images, and they were like, "We want that bear all the way across the header with our logo in it as the logo." And she's like, "I'm, I can't do that." And then, so she ended up doing this as a joke, like, "Look how bad this is," and they're like, "Oh, perfect, nailed it." And <laughs> so that never went in her portfolio. That never like she just got paid and abandoned that project, but. I don't know, just be careful. Like, gosh. Um, yeah, there's hopefully at, at that point of being hired and knowing the client, you're somewhat on the same page to begin with. Um, but I, again, there's going to be times where, I mean, there was, there was an instance with Ted and I, and he wanted to go in one direction. I was like, not, that's not good. But it, I think what happened after that is when I explained to him, I mean, Ted's a creative individual. Um, I had to explain to him on a design level, basic, like a certain principles of why, like, yes, I know I showed you that. It was for an option, but it was to show you that this is not the way we want to go. Um, and just explain, like, if you know what you're talking about, again, it's being authentic in what you know. Um, if, if you know what you're talking about and you can explain why that's not a good reason. I find more often than not, they'll listen to you. Sometimes they just don't because they, right. yeah. I mean, they're are the client. Irrational, yeah. So a lot of times some people are just not easy to talk to at that point, so yeah. It's gonna happen. There are gonna be letdowns. Yeah, I feel like it's like a hit or miss, yeah. especially, but again, options, guys. Options, options, yeah. options. Try to make that miss a hit, so yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. So what does it look like to create branding for a tech company? Well, we want to, pull it up? We want to start showing a couple slides. Slides, we'll, guys. We'll give you our example of Isia. Slides. Oh, there, there we go. So <laughs> that was the logo for Isia for the better part of a decade, right? Yep. It'll give you a cavity looking at it. So candy like. <laughs> yes. Um, Really detailed, really colorful, really ev everything, every Photoshop <laughs> filter trick yeah. right there. Um, yes, yeah, so I got hired back in 2015, I think it was, end of 2015. And Ted was like, I'm ready for a rebrand. All you have to do is keep the name in the purple, essentially. So it was a pretty clean slate. He had seen my work. Um, I tend to do a lot of custom type work, uh, a lot of branding, so it was a pretty good match. Um, so I, I, I like the, the, the job, the, the challenge set before me, before us, essentially, because Marty was really helpful and involved on this and giving feedback and working through some stuff. So Yeah, this is only one of our six of like Six of probably of throughout the whole thing, close to 80 to 100 options. Uh, whether sketched or refined. And um, I knew that, like, knowing Isaiah and knowing it, it's, a, it's a brand about creators, well, it's twofold. It's a tech company. We do a lot of our own software and that kind of stuff. And then it's, it's, it's a creator company. Like, we champion the creators is pretty much our banner slogan. Um, we allow creators to do what they do, get paid for it, and uh, put food on the table, essentially, for their families. Um, so I watched a lot of videos, and I realized how many lives Isaiah has touched, how many families it's helped, how many kids it's made happy. So just trying to create something that was essentially a banner that creators could stand behind. So that was the general idea going into it. And I just, I went through and did a smattering of visuals. And so for our logo, this was my idea behind it. Started with a flag and just simplified it down until we got the icon that we now have on that far right. Um, and then taking it from there and realizing we, want, we wanted custom type work, um, something that no one else could have, which is important. You need to be simple, but you need to be original. So I don't know if you noticed, but if you go back to the icon really quick, Marty, oh, that sure counter space right. ultimately became the shape of our main logo. Oh, like the center of the, of the flag. So at the heart of it is, is our main uh, mark. So, and if you notice behind, this was the first uh, 
usage of the magic. He wanted like just some kind of elements behind and yeah. and to tie that through all of our products and, and sites and everything. Yeah. So that that was a, a quick, quick rundown of our idea rebrand. And and Ted loved it. Ted was super happy with the process. It was a time consuming process, even though it all looks really simple, but it was I mean, it was probably like three months if total go, working through if everything. If you go back, some of them were, Ted was like, well, this is a little too feminine or too masculine or too bold. Or, yeah. So we had to, to do our research and figure out what the audience would yeah. be most comfortable with. Yeah, and, and implementation too. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, look at really, really, a good example nowadays is, is when a company rebrands or whether it's Hillary unveils her rebrand or Verizon shows their rebrand or Hillary's brand, Verizon's rebrand. People are like up in arms and this is horrible. It's easy to judge something on Twitter or social media and just say this is, they got, Pentagram got paid how much to do this? This company got paid, this, what? This is, I could do this in, in an hour. Hey, you don't you know? want to Airbnb it. <laughs> um, but I was hypercritical about the Hillary logo at first, but then seeing the rollout, seeing the application, seeing it used very, I'm like, that's genius. It's simple, it's identifiable, but it's brilliant. So um, that was hopefully what we were after, hopefully what we achieved. And I mean, it's still as strong a mark as it was when we did it two years ago. And I still like it. A lot of times if I work on something for a while, by the time I'm done with the project, we're done with the project, we're like, hate it. <laughs> but st still today, strong as ever, in my opinion, and I enjoy it as much as ever. So maybe you guys don't. No, I like it. <laughs> I like it. hate it. I knew it. <laughs> so um, do we have anything after? Oh, yes. yeah. So we created a typeface to go along with the brand from scratch. That was fun. I love doing that. I kind of, that's one of the things I do in my free time as a hobby, but I was able to do it for a company I was working for, which is pretty great. Um, now we use it for everything. We have it implemented on our website and all over the place. Um, so how do you guys, so you've seen some of the elements and you, you guys saw a bit of the journey that they went through to get to some of the final elements. When you think about a, a rebrand, like is there a list of items that you're like, yeah, we need a font, we need a logo, we need a this, that we need a color scheme. How do you put together a rebrand to build out you know, the style guide later on. What process do you guys through when creating a rebrand? Why don't you take that? <laughs> uh, well, in this, well, again, it really all depends on the client. Uh, a tech company, especially like Isaiah, um, the implementation is, is very vast. Um, and especially more so than just your regular company that needs a logo on a business card and whatever. I mean, with Isaiah, our logo will either be that tiny at times, or, I mean, we just had Isaiah Fest, and we had our logo uh, made into a 20-foot tall, 5-foot thick inflatable. It wouldn't in fit, the back of like, the room. it wouldn't was, fit in this room. Yeah, it it's was insane. that really, it wouldn't fit, fit in two of these rooms. It's like, it's like a blob <laughs> on a lake, uh. that kind of thing, <laughs> where you jump from the dock onto, yeah, it's, it's, it looks like that. So, um, yeah, with, with a company like Isaiah, a tech company, the implementation, you have to think in terms of such a, broad, such a broad spectrum, and then realize the level of simplicity, like I said, and originality in executing um, something for that. And then, I mean, color scheme was easy. Ted was like, I want purple, but then you build out complementary colors around that. So we have a primary color palette to go along with our main branding, a secondary color palette to use if we do infographics and stuff to explain numbers and this and that. I mean, that all comes into place. It's all it's all there for us to choose from at that point. Then, like the brand bible becomes structure in itself, and then we're gonna you know create. But rules are gonna be created, rules to like follow, and a structure to kind of keep that brand image consistent. Yeah, when you have a when you have a clean slate like we did coming into this rebrand, you you can build the the guidelines, the brand guidelines after you've created the brand. It's kind of cheating at times, but it's nice. It. Yeah. Gives a lot of freedom. I'm currently trying to sneak green into. Yeah. I don't know if you guys get excited about a new color, but. That's when you know we're kind of too deep yeah. in the rebrand where that right. excites us. So. Yeah. Cool. So when you guys were going through all this, you talked about how, you know, sometimes you get to the end of a project and you hate what, you know, was created because you've worked on it so long or whatever it may be. How do you guys work on creative to where it's relevant and it has a longer shelf life? Like, what is your forethought with that? 
I would say that you're never really done with a project or design, so um, I guess I can show you guys in a second, but like for the IZF Fest, like the logo, because it's every year it, it comes around, like we can change the logo up some, so yeah. um, do you want me to pull that up maybe? Yeah, sure. That's that best. This is how it started. Uh, that I was two, two years. That ago. was two IZFs ago, and because we had just finished the rebrand and we were launching at IZFs, <laughs> we just added that little tag onto it yeah, to keep it pretty rebrand. simple. And like I said, uh, its implementation is. Key. <clears throat> so this was yeah. Another set of options were given to Ted, and uh, we ended so, up choosing the top left. I, I don't know if any of you guys went to IZFs, but. Um, this was, we pitched, you can stay here for a second. We, uh, for this past IZFS, we went with a, um, a very uh, mid-century Tomorrowland World's Fair kind of theme. Uh, we could do something fun and a little more elaborate than the, the IZFS before because we are already established, not really unveiling any new branding kind of stuff. Um, so we had some fun with it. Lots more color, lots more uh, emotion, hopefully. Uh, Isaiah is a really, really fun brand, and we just wanted the people coming this time to, you know, have some fun with it. So the build-outs, the posters, all that stuff really felt fun. I mean, yeah, going back to what you said about you're never really done. Like I had a professor in school that just said, uh, done is better than perfect, because if you're going for perfect, it's always, I can tweak this, I can tweak this, I can tweak, you know, it's, it's never a done deal. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know if that perfectly aligns with what you're saying, but that's just what it. <laughs> um, what was after this one? This was. I think it goes into the. Oh, okay. Um, so more of the. Do you want to go back to the magic of? Yeah. Well, what's? Uh, I think yeah. We can just go to the next slide. Okay. So you want to talk about this? Yeah. So this was a concept again from our CEO about where he sees the company going and and the tech side, all the software, like the different elements of it. So he wanted to. Uh, create this world based on that, that, that we could use visually in, in our site and all our videos and materials. But yeah. He was essentially, he said, what can we do to the brand now that we have our branding done? How can we take it further? How can we show every aspect of the software side of the company, who it reaches, how can we make it fun? Because let's be honest, that technically isn't very fun, talking about software and going into the, well, Oh, some people. Some people it is. Um, to everyone, not so much. So, yeah, we came up with this, this idea for a world. Um, and so we started to, Ted built out this map. Um, we had the idea to do it on this grid so it would be easy to piece things together to keep a consistency of look. And so we started to build out, taking logos we already had made for the company and, and continuing until we had, uh, you can show the next slide. Uh, this full-on, very sim city-looking uh, landscape for Isaiah, and if it's hard to zoom in on this, but um, it shows every aspect of our software and what we. Oh, yeah, yeah, it just blurry. gets blurry. So, <laughs> yeah. So, needless to say, with the completion of this, we have so many assets, a library of visual assets now that we can take and implement elsewhere and yeah, meet pretty much every visual need. So how did you guys decide like really which creative aspects got put into this world? And how much freedom, how much you know, direction? That's not really ever a concern at Isaiah because um, we all kind of realized Ted is a very extravagant individual. His background uh, is in design as well. So. Yeah. If you guys haven't noticed yet, he like brought in the whole idea of like making a world. I feel like you have yeah. to be kind of very creative, <laughs> like yeah. to um, bring all these elements of a company to make them visually attractive into something completely not seen before. It's just interesting. Just all that. Yeah. Stuff. His level of creativity is is honestly just nuts. Like. I've created something before which I was like, oh, this is pretty cool and creative. He's like, not enough, not good enough. Take it 10 steps further. So we just realized we had to think on an insane level of what's fun, what's creative, what is, this is bland, even though we thought this was good. Let's take it 10 steps further. So on a creative level, uh, we're not really limited. So um, 
that kind of answers the question. It doesn't really help. <laughs> but uh, when you have that kind of person you're working with, take advantage of it. Like, go all out. Um, I mean, this was just like, what's the most insane way you could convey this idea? And that's what we did. That's what we rolled with, and he was perfect with it. Cool. Is there anything else you guys wanted to show? We're going to switch gears up a little um, bit. Did we want to go to a website at this point? or? Do you want oh, to so yeah, this is further build out of other elements when we got to the website side of things. Yeah, so some of this is actually inside the buildings if you, if you yeah. could zoom in and yeah. get that intricate with it. But. Do we go to website now or do we wait? It's up to you. What's the next question? We are going to change up the tone a little bit and talk about some of how you protect the rights to your work okay. in a digital portfolio way. We roll into that? Yeah, we'll go to the website at the end. Okay. okay. Um, you want to speak on that, Anthony? Uh, protect the rights of like stuff that we do. Mm, that's a, that's a very interesting. Yeah. So one. if you think about like interviews, or if you want to show off your, you know, your digital portfolio, but your work's already out there, you know, how do you protect that with while working for a company? Because right, like you guys couldn't write on here, Chaz, Marty, Anthony, right? So when you're thinking about as these guys go yeah, into start. you know the real world and they want to interview, how do you protect your rights of your work? I would actually say don't like. It's flattery that people are using your stuff, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ollie Moss, but he's a great illustrator, and like, you'll see the, oh, what is it, uh, the signs. Star Wars stuff. Everybody. He does the Star Wars stuff, but it's like, don't panic, those signs or yeah. whatever it is. Like, keep calm. And keep calm. You yeah. see those everywhere now, but he started that based on an old poster after, I believe it was World War II yeah. in Europe, but, so everybody tells him, you know, you know, people are stealing from you, and he's like, "No, no, no! This is this is out there now, and yeah. I'm past it. And just just use it." Yeah. There, honestly, there's not much new under the sun. I mean, that's what it, that's what it comes down to. Um, which is also Im why it's important to make sure you're not just doing something um, too simple. Like it's important to inject yourself into what you do, like we were saying before to take it that extra mile and not just settle for something mediocre because chances are that's already been done. Um, I mean, in, in the digital world we live in now, whether it's Dribbble or Instagram, I mean, I post my work everywhere. I mean, and then a month later I realized, oh, I've, I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. I, made, I made something like that, but this person posted it a year before I did, or it, it's, it's just gonna happen. So if someone deliberately rips your work off, yeah. There's not much you can do about it. I mean, it's flattering. I mean, if it's if it's if they're making money off of it and capitalizing it, then you might have a problem in the rounds to do. Right. Something. We actually had that with Isaiah, the website, the the previous version. Like, there was a company in Mexico that just wanted to start the very same thing, and we went and looked, and it was like the purple, the light bulb, our creators. Uh, yeah. Like, it was like all of it except for the logo. The name. Yeah. yeah. So, at that point, well, and, and your company can get involved, yeah. but not on the design level. I would say. Yeah. And that was kind of the thought with the new website that we did. I mean, every tech company has the same kind of website. Every startup has the same kind of website that somewhat parallaxing, you know, three icons and here's what we do and nice photo. And, and, and we were just like, how do we break that mold? How do we do something completely different, absolutely insane and nuts and still carry through Isaiah's look and feel? I don't know. I feel like with what Marty said, like, I kind of agree because as times are moving, technology is like going crazy, of course. Uh, we're seeing more and more artists making their work public and like yeah. creative commons free, like completely. Yeah. Uh, for example, I, I personally follow this guy called Beeple. Uh, his name is Mike Wilkelman, and he creates the most insane visuals. And his work has been picked up by very, very famous artists. And they're being recycled, reused all the time. I mean, that's what he has on his website. Co go ahead, just use it however you want. Commercially, he doesn't care. Just give him a shout out, right? So you're going to be creating work. And if people are going to be using it, it's because your work is really good. So. And it makes the world look better. Yeah, and it makes the world look better. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, if people are using your work, it's for a good reason. And you, it's going to be nearly impossible to protect. Yeah. So, so enjoy it when it happens. Yeah. Well, 
All right. So what weight in interviews does company dictated work, so working for companies and working on projects with them or schoolwork or freelancing, how does that carry weight in interviews? Do any of those carry more weight than others? What should these guys think about when they go to present their portfolios in, in interviews? I would just say have a strong online portfolio and then that that does most of the work. If you can like actually get along with people and be funny and like I don't know, feel like you can be part of a team that's that's gonna take you the rest of the way. But yeah. yeah I think that's all you really I don't know. Right out of oh, do you wanna answer first? Oh, um yeah, they gather as much stuff as you can. Um, I know that when you're in school, you're going to be probably studying one thing, but if you have a hobby, even if you have like a different interest for something completely different, I personally do not mind if I see some extra stuff coming from someone's portfolio. I'd probably be surprised, be like, whoa, this person can do that, and probably does something pretty incredible that I would like to apply to my company if I was hiring someone. Just finding more like creative people in their own way and people that have something to offer and more, I feel like definitely try to build a portfolio that, that tells that story about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I graduated college, um, it still wasn't so easy to throw together an online portfolio yet. So I was actually still bringing a physical portfolio around. Um, but I will say, Everywhere. I mean, I went on an interview with a studio in the Empire State Building. I went on one Fifth Avenue, like all, all over New York City. And um, sure enough, the pieces in my portfolio that were self-initiated or, or personal projects were the ones that they were always drawn to. And they, they overlooked all the school stuff because you go to one art school and you take the classes, whether it's uh, whatever class it is, um, there's another art school giving the same projects to the same kids. So those have all been seen. So I would recommend doing stuff for yourself and putting that in your portfolio. Um, once again, those are the things you're going to be more passionate about. And, uh, and it's going to draw the attention of the people looking at it. So, Like, don't stop creating. You know, um, always try to add stuff into your portfolio. I feel like freelancing is even a great you know it's a great experience that you can get you can add that to your resume and then you're going to find out whoa I'm actually have the first step here of creating a professional re resume I'm going to keep on doing that um, try the networking all the time and anywhere you are if you find someone that needs something put your name to that and add that to your your resume and then you're going to have options further later you're going to be like whoa I have all this experience I can probably pick this one that represents more of what I do and then you're you find out that you're perfectioning your resume. It's getting more and more, uh, it has a more direction of what, who you are. So don't stop working, keep on doing what you do, and what you like to do. And again, you know, this is something you love to do, so it shouldn't be that like stressful, because yeah. it's something that you love. So yeah, build that, build that portfolio up, 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 don't stop. Cool. So you guys talked about, you know, the different dogs earlier. Yeah. You guys weren't in school together, and so you were kind of meshed together as a team throughout the last couple of years. How do you navigate working with different creative minds or different creative talents? How do you come together to bring products forth that are just awesome? Um, I would say, like, I don't know, just be open, be respectful of one another, and be... I don't know. We we have like a small group of people, and they're not all designers. Like no. the, the ideas and being creative can come out of anyone. So, a lot of and I feel like we utilize that in our work as well. Although it's it's really funny. So I don't yeah. know. It's ironic um, being in communications, um, whether it's visual or otherwise. The amount of at times little communication there tends to be, um, and that hinders work and hinders. Um, the progress of, <clears throat> excuse me, what you do. Um, one of the first thing Ted told me, because I got hired at Isaiah straight from being a freelancer and working at home. He's like, this is a little different. This is a team. And we are not here to further ourselves as individuals. We're here to further the company and the beliefs. And so it really, you got to be a nice person, first of all. Um, I've known people who have been up for the same promotion and the only reason why the one person got it, even though they might have been a little behind the other person as far as work quality, was just because they were nice. 
and people liked working with them. Um, yeah, you gotta like people. You have to yeah. be talkative. I think listen. and actually taking that time and and connecting with your coworkers, like even though you're goofing off or whatever it is, yeah. it actually propels the work and it makes you do more. It makes you more productive in the yeah. end. So it needs to be a family. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, I mean, I kind of understand concepts more if it's kind of told through me through their perspective kind of in their own way that they express something, I'll be like, wait, I, I know where you're coming from. I kind of know what you want now. Because you can give me a whole you know, PowerPoint presentation of what you want, but then I'm not going to share that same vision of what, yeah. what you really want. I feel like you have to be nice. You have to have that very, you know, have to have like a good personality. You can't be working in an environment that you feel like you're closing a box and you have to produce what you have to do and that's it. You're not going to know where it's coming from. You're not going to know where yeah. it's going. You have to collaborate. That's a big, 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 big important like step that you have to yeah. understand when you're like working with a team. It's not just you. Yeah. I think we need to switch and show the website at some point here because we're Yeah, yeah if you guys time. want to. Yeah, website time? Website time? Website, okay. time. website time. Oh wait. All right. Do that. So I'll go ahead. Yeah. So the, yeah, on the left is the old site when we were talking about the standard templates that everybody sees, which, you know, I mean, it's easy to read, it's easy to to take it all in, but it's yeah. not very challenging and it's You don't remember it. It's yeah. not something it's that It's like you, any other of the sites. Yeah. Um, it's on the right. We have the new website on the right and it's just a little bit less cluttered. I feel so. And here's the actual website. So you can one little point, you can see a little, oh, sorry, you're backwards to me. You can see a little uh, DeLorean down there, so that's like a little hidden yeah. picture reference. This thing <laughs> yeah. is super touchy right now. Um, what else? There's a little drone, so do we want to, do you want to talk about the video a little bit and have me show that? Or? Yeah. Um, Lead into that. Okay, so uh, video, video, video. Um, we wanted to place a video because we all know people love videos. It's been something that I've been talking every day of my life. <laughs> but it's it's something that everyone I feel is looking for a video of everything. You go onto a website, you're like, I don't want to read. I just want to go into the video. <laughs> I want to know what this is, and I want it the quickest and easiest way I can understand. So uh, job security for you. Yeah. <laughs> job security. But um, yeah, the, this is a video that we um, worked on and it's kind of fast paced and just gives you like a crash course of what we do. Let's see if it works. Are you a blogger, a tweeter, a YouTuber or photographer? Guess what? You are a creator and you could be making money through the IZEA marketplace. Whether you are an influential Instagrammer or Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, top brands and media publishers will pay you to write content take pictures, make videos, and more. Choose which opportunities make sense for you, negotiate your price, and partner with the brands and companies that you love on your own terms. It's easy and free to sign up. Just go to isaiah.com slash creators and get started today. Now, say you're a marketer that wants to get the word out about your product or service. You can tap into Isaiah's network of creators to produce and distribute content on your behalf. Whether you need a blog post written for your own site or product placement in a YouTube celebrity's video, Isaiah is flexible and here to help. You can license our full software platform, leverage our team's expertise with managed services, or go self-service with our content AMP tool. We provide everything you need to scale both content and influencer marketing programs. To get started as a marketer, click contact us or sign up for self-service at isaiah.com slash content AMP. Content, influence, scale. Isia, the creator marketplace. So yeah, that really helped me explain what the company does because it's just you just watch the video, you kind of get a good idea of what's going on, what we do, and it's just the easiest way that people can just understand what we do. We do a lot. It's hard to. Yeah, it, wrap that up. Yeah, it's really, really hard to like explain. Oh, uh, we just do this, but we also do that, and we and that too, that. And, and that, and, and we build it, and we. Yeah, so that was actually the first video we ever did. So comparatively speaking to the other videos we have now, it's it's really on the simple side, which is good because people need to digest what we do right off the bat. But we have a 
We have a software video and a services video. I don't know if you want to play. Show that. Yeah. Isaiah Software helps marketers and creators transact online. Our platform is designed for the management of custom content and influencer marketing programs. We provide tools ranging from creator discovery and campaign communication to content analytics and payments. Isaia software is purpose-built to help make it easier for marketers and creators to collaborate. With a fully integrated suite of features, back office headaches are replaced with a streamlined workflow, approval management, and audit trails. Our software is available in three editions. The Publisher Edition is for talent agencies and influencer networks who represent large quantities of creators. These customers are sell-side and get paid to produce and distribute content. The Marketer Edition is for brands, agencies, and PR firms who want to produce and distribute content through influential creators. These customers are buy-side, purchasing content and distribution. And the Partner Edition is for companies that would like to operate their own white-labeled marketplace. These customers are buy and sell side with a network of their own creators and brand clients. All IZEA customers participate in the IZEA Exchange, a global network that provides marketers with greater access to creators and creators with more paying opportunities to work with brands. Our technology streamlines the workflow between all parties, saving our users time and money, while enabling them to scale their efforts like never before. License Isaia X to eliminate inefficient processes, extend your creator programs, and generate more revenue for your company. Request a demo of Isaia X today. So that's a good example of probably a year and a half difference between the first video and that video. Yeah. Where things got taken visually. Yeah, so we're, we have this whole different approach. Also, Chaz has been working on this new perspective on his design. It's kind of like that Sims like vision over there. Um, and yeah, so again, these videos explain kind of like those marketing terms, all of these different businessy terms, and just makes yeah. them a little bit more fun, attractive, easier to perceive. And this is something that is a challenge, but yeah, we you know it, enjoy it. We enjoy it. We try to make those complex terms into something a lot more easy to see. Yeah, this whole website is like 80 pages, fully illustrated. Lost a lot of sleep executing yeah. this, but yeah, it came out pretty cool. So I know we're running out of time, but if you guys ever want to just peruse and try to find the hidden things that we've put in there, um, I don't know if you want to show one of those really quick. One of the little visual references to. Oh. Something clever. Um, let's see. Um, oh, um, where's the um, anchor resources? Anchor is the resources one? one? Yeah. Anchorman. Oh, an anchorman. Anchorman. This is the way. Who's whispering? So there's. <laughs> that's Anthony. No, that's not me, guys. So that was a little fun little Ghostbusters reference. Oh, yeah, Ghostbusters. Um, and then, yeah, blog was where the other one is. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, Sorry, you're backwards. There you go. So we didn't tell Ted we were doing all this stuff, and then when he realized it, you could just hear him laugh hysterically from wherever he was. Fun little Anchorman reference. Anchorman. There's, yeah. there's Teen Wolf in here somewhere, too, but I, yeah. let's start. <laughs> Again, we're dating ourselves with all these, but yeah. Always have fun, guys. Yeah, have fun with what you do, <laughs> whether tech or otherwise. Just have fun. Mm -hmm. Great. So you guys can see kind of the journey and how they really just started with a typeface, a logo, and they just really blew it out and carried it through. So I think we're going to open it up for questions, if you guys have any for our team. Yeah. I think they're going to pass the mic around. Hi, good morning. My name is Michael Fakir. Um, I want to ask this question since everyone on the panel is creatives. Uh, I know for myself when I deal with my clientele, I kind of stress creating something that's unique as well as functional because, you know, design is, is more than aesthetics. It's, it's about function. It's shifting over to being functional. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of trends in the design world, how important are trends in your process? Um, trends, in my opinion, are a double-edged sword. Um, they're important to be aware of, um, but I feel like, honestly, good creative 
design work can transcend that. Um, uh, a good example, um, I had a teacher in college, his name was maybe, you know, James Victoria. He's really notorious for being kind of like a, a bad boy in the design world. It sounds super <laughs> cheesy, but if, you, if you've seen any of his videos or tutorials or whatever, I mean, he's brilliant. Um, because at the time when I was in school, one of the biggest trends was um, I'll put spray paint drips and splatters on everything. Even if it had nothing to do with spray paint or stenciling, just throw it on there. Um, and it was just so overdone and just, it looked horrible. But then at the time, the most recent Rambo movie was coming out. Like, I think it was the last one. Um, Stallone is looking old, but he's still jacked and it's still bloody as all get out. But the poster they put out was literally just all white, black letters that said Rambo. Um, and his silhouette, part of his silhouette. And it was very crude looking, but it, was, it looked like someone had just, in a gorilla style, just spray painted it with a stencil, like on the side of a crate in Mongolia, that kind of thing. Um, so that's a good example of trend overdone versus trend and applicable. Like, so you had good, like you looked at the instance of the poster being created and it utilized a trend, but it was also perfect for that instance. So, I mean, trends come and go. That's why it's important, like with branding or otherwise, um, take it with a grain of salt, apply it in certain ways. Don't make everything you're making based on a trend because six months later, you're like, this is outdated, I don't like it now. Like, anyone's gonna look at this and be like, this has to change. I would say just, yeah, just, you can use it, but don't rely on it. And yeah. um, I mean, take like the long shadow, like. I think two years ago, like yeah. it was everywhere. Like it, you couldn't get away from it. Yeah. But you know, it's still, it looks, still looks kind of cool, but I think it was just well, just way overdone and yeah. still in its right setting, it could be utilized. I don't know. Absolutely. I would say combine it. Um, if always be looking out for trends, especially online. You're going to see certain trends coming in and going, but the ones that kind of stick a little bit, you know, go ahead, try to replicate it, figure out what you like about it. Um, like, you know, the same, like completely start from scratch, figure out like, oh, this is like working with what I'm, what I want to do with it. And if it doesn't, then just take a step back, try to figure something different, like an alternate route. But yeah, I, I would say combine, like always be on the lookout for new trends. You never know if you can combine even like two new trends and make a third one coming out. That'd be really cool. It could work, but yeah, always be exploring. Never, never stop looking at trends. That's something that's very important. Yeah, so you don't, yeah, you have to be aware so you don't do something by accident as well. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lecture uh, back in school, and my friend asked, I mean, I forget who the lecturer was, but it was like a design giant. Like one of those like Saul Bass, Paul Rand kind of characters. I know one of those guys was dead at the time, so it probably wasn't him, it was probably the other guy. And he asked him, he's like, how important is personal style? And his answer was, what is style? Like, you, you don't go after style, you don't go after trends, you apply good principles, no de good design principles, and you'll never go wrong. Yeah, hopefully that answered, yeah, yeah. Hello, good morning, my name is Vakai Gums. Um, my question is, uh, does uh, your Isaiah help um, people without a following um, get in touch with uh, marketing agencies? Because I want to start um, reviewing video games, oh, but sorry. I don't think I'll have the funds to be able to get the new games and uh, cool. reviews. My uh, first big job actually out of college was working for IGN. So. We did reviews of the video games and all the designs for everything. That's pretty fun. But I think probably Lindsay maybe yeah. answers this one. I think the biggest thing is to go and sign up to be a creator in our system. Um, and then what you do when you sign up is you attach either your Twitter handle, your YouTube, whatever platform that you were on that you are reviewing those, like specifically for you in this example, wherever you're reviewing those games or whatever it may be, attach those handles, sites, pages, whatever it may be, so that, and you'll fill out a profile, you'll do all the things where you'll, you'll basically put in your information that then tags you as a designated creator for gaming specifically. So then if like a EA or whoever it may be 
or you know, working on campaigns with us, you will come up in that creator search, and then they would essentially put out an opportunity for you to then bid on and make so much money off of. But I would say definitely go in, sign up, and attach whatever those social handles are that you are reviewing those gaming systems or games on. Yeah. Yeah. As you, as you lets anyone sign up. Yeah. You don't have to have a minimum amount or maximum amount. It's open for anyone. Yeah. But um, I would recommend like strongly, like keep you know, your, your passion towards it, keep working on it, build the following and you will see results in the future. Yeah. But you have to keep yeah. hitting it. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Is that good? Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, my name is Jeremy Whitinger. I'm in the CA program. Okay. Uh, Maybe you can give me some advice on this, because uh, when I start a project, and uh, for me, well, I'm starting to use Photoshop more and more these days, and I'm actually enjoying it, because I get to express myself more. But what I have a problem with, uh, personal project or whatever, is that I have accumulated, the time I've been here, I've accumulated so much stuff, um, you know, be it textures, pictures, whatever. Um, I have a hard time whittling down, you know, out of the stuff that I have to start a project. <laughs> so are, are they like all in Dropbox or how are you storing all these kind of things? Uh, external hard drive. Okay. A, cu a few external hard drives actually. Wow. Are you just asking in regards to the tools? Yeah. yeah I mean, if, if, uh, I mean, if there's a, I mean, like, what, like, if you have that same issue, what's the process of, you know, maybe a process you go through with, you know, whittling it down to just, you know, one or two choices instead of like a hundred? So let's say, I want to see if I have your question clear. Like, you have a bunch of assets that you've been creating on these drives, and you want to know how to start a project with well, them? Yeah, or well, if I have a project already that's something I have to do. Uh huh. You know, but the thing is, you know, I have, I'll have so many. Ideas, concepts, everything that I've oh, that, that I've just have yeah. already saved up, you know, just a process of going through and eliminating you know, down right. to just a few. Okay. I mean, first thing I would do is is kind of um, definitely know what your end game is. Like, what do you want out of this entire project? What's your purpose? What are you trying to convey? And then from there. Um, I think you'd be able to eliminate a lot of stuff. Like, don't don't just throw something into a project just because you can. Um, is it applicable? Um, uh, if it's if it's for a product, if it's for a brand, if it's for this, does that match that brand? Does that match this product? Does that match this feeling I'm feeling right now doing this personal thing? Um, I mean, it, it's it's a matter of like, I, yeah, tons of Photoshop brushes. I mean. Less is more, honestly. It's it's trite, it's it's overused, but that really is what it comes down to. And I, I I went from a point in time of using so many grains and textures and this and whether it was custom typography or and then I just realized the more I got away from that, the more I liked the work more and the longer it had an impact. And it wasn't so much about the tricks and the the details. The, the wrong details versus the right details. Um, that's personally how I would go about a situation like that. Um, I don't know about you guys. But. I mean, I, I agree with you. Um, I would, yeah, you're gonna be collecting all these assets into your hard drives, but when are you gonna be using them into like one thing? I would say start from the basics, get something going, and then sooner or later you're gonna have your project building up stronger and stronger. Um, yeah, you can, Go ahead, keep on looking for more textures, brushes, and all those things, but you have to use it like one day, so you have to build upon that. Yeah. The Creative Cloud also has like a pretty awesome library system that we use collectively, so Chaz will create something and put it in, and then I can immediately apply it yeah. and find it fairly easily. Yeah. yeah, Kind of a good example, kind of along the lines of what you're talking about. I, um, I'm a little nuts when it comes to fonts and typefaces. Um, I have spent so much money and accumulated so many and acquired some through other ways. Um, but at the time, I'm like, I gotta have this one, I gotta have this one, I gotta have this one, and this one. And now, I probably use the same maybe 10 fonts. So I have this huge library that I've never touched, you know? 
I just had to have it or I had to make it or I had to do this. And, you know, I've, I've without intentionally doing so, I've whittled it down to the, the 10 most effective, 10 most impactful, you know, yeah, if you find, to choose if you, from. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go for it. If you find something that like speaks to you, build upon that, I would say. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just keep on doing that and then you'll find out your, perf your perfection in your own work and then it'll grow from there on. Yeah. Uh, my name is John Winward. I'm in the entertainment business program. Um, his his question was sort of going from like a hundred ideas to one minus going from zero to one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you had mentioned earlier about um, when creating a, a logo or a design, like thinking back to the message that you want to get across mm -hmm. with the design. Um, how do you uh, go from the message to building something from scratch, like deciding which shapes and colors and fonts to be using in the design. I would start a little earlier than that and figure out who the audience is and then like tailor it towards yeah. like whoever you're trying to speak to. But. Yeah. Do your research. Research is super important. Read, um, yeah. study. Um, as far like coming up with that initial idea. Yeah. You gotta, you have to know what you know and then, um, yeah, I, I would honestly say the execution is even a little ways off. Um, sketch a lot. Yeah, start sketching. Work, work through ideas. Build on your ideas. Don't be afraid to go down a path that's wrong to get to the right one. Um, you're going to make a lot of bad logos, bad brands, bad things before you make that right one. Um, so that's, that's something that I've learned. Um, it's a lot of trial and error. But the more you know about the thing you're working on, the better. Um, sometimes you'll nail it the first try. Sometimes it'll take days and weeks and multiple revisions and multiple executions to get to that one. Um, and make it, I had a teacher that said, if you're not having fun, don't do it. Um, have fun, find the fun in it, find the enjoyment in what you're doing, even if that means coming, uh, approaching a project from a different direction than just the simple sit down, sketch, execute, done. I mean, go somewhere, go in a different yeah. setting, be in a different environment. Music. Music, don't watch TV. Like I'll, I'll go, <laughs> I'll work on a project at night and I'll have TV on or something showing on my laptop next to me. And go even if I'm girls. not watching it, that will literally halt what I do creatively. And the second I shut it and just put music on, it's crazy, yeah. I can, work like nuts and I'm like I don't know why I keep making this mistake but yeah do things that, that foster that creative flow as well it's not always just about the method of putting pen to paper it's it's other elements as well that contribute so yeah does that help you at all Very much. okay cool so once upon a time, fun fact about me, I was a designer for um, Disney's Fairy Tale Wed Fairy Disney's Fairy Tale Weddings, Disney Youth Groups, things like that. And there was a resource library downstairs in our building. And so what I would do, because I, at some point with Disney, right, when you're designing for them, you're just like, uh, how much more Pixie Desk? Uh, how much more Mickey? Right? Like, it's the same. And so what I would have to do would to get out of that thinking, right, is to literally go down in this resource center and they had tons of books, tons of art books and just start looking at them and just to get out of my own head because you would start a new project and they would want something different, but really you had to get out of that shell and then there's a little bit of anxiety, right, that you might get where you're coming into a new project and you're like, I don't know what to do. You just have to get out of that and just get away from it get into like looking at art, getting, looking in your environment, not looking at TV, music, whatever it may be, just to get out of your own head for a minute to then come back to it and then really just let it out. So. Uh, at times I'm kind of an anti-designer. Like I have friends that have their bookshelf full of design books and their wall of, of gig posters. And I think I own like two or three design books that friends have, have made and put together. Um, uh, stay away from dribble is good um, Instagram following design that's good to a point but if you find yourself looking at those things for inspiration and jump off points you're gonna find that what you're making is exactly that stay away from that and you'll come up with something new hopefully 
chances are. I mean, like I said at before, least it'll be yours, at least it'll be yours. Yeah. And, and you, you run less of a risk of being like, ah, oh, I looked at that too much and I literally made the same thing. Now I got to start over from scratch. So venture, venture out there, like yeah. look and try to, I, I personally feel like the best thing you can do is combine different like theories to combine different ideas and make one out of, out of all those things. But again, it's about venturing. You can go and isolate yourself and try to find what you kind of can, can, can design from your own self, or you can just ex kind of combine everything you see on Dribble. Just kind of like moderate what your your intake of design is. Yeah. If you're de if you're designing something for a burger joint, you're not going to sit in a room and, and look at burger icons on Dribble. Like I'm going to go to the actual burger joint and sit down and eat a burger and see how it makes me feel and look at the environment and you know. It's, it's pretty simple when you strip it down and you actually take a moment to think about, oh, this makes more sense than just locking myself away and studying what people have already done. But, yeah. All right, um, hi, my name is Jolena Kohler. I'm a media communications student. Right now I do freelance brand design. And I was curious, what are your kind of tips and techniques to figure out a client's style? Because sometimes they have a really hard time articulating what exactly they want or they do exactly what you're talking about. They give you an example that's already been done over and over. So yeah. what's your kind of process of convincing them and coming up with um, what their style should be? Uh, going back to give options to them, like try to figure out who they are um, and then give working examples of it, like actually in use. And then they, I think that would make them more comfortable with, with your direction or at least you can steer away from that at that point. So it should help guide you. Yeah. Um, might sound a little cheesy, but mood boards are helpful. Uh, with Pinterest, it's even more helpful. Um, don't throw a lot of design work in there. Show them things that evoke an emotion. Um, how you, pers like, they will be impressed if you've done research on them. And, and you're like, I get this vibe when I think about your brand or when I see this part of your, or what you do. Well, you're creating the brand, but um, yeah, the more knowledgeable you are of your client, the company, whatever, uh, mo the more they'll be impressed and the more willing they'll be to let you do your thing then. If they feel like they need to hold your hand, they will grab it and drag you along for the ride. Um, so yeah, don't show them a lot of, show them a lot of design stuff you're creating. Don't show a lot of design stuff that's already been done for a brand just like theirs. Um, and then, um, crap, I had another thing I wanted to tag onto that. Um, and it flew right out of my head. Hmm. Oh well, if it hits me, I'll blurt it out. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. You got anything for that? Maybe, I don't know, it's just, it's different for like design on its own thing. So catering to someone and making sure that's what they want. It's just, for me, it's a little bit more different, but I don't know, like my word of advice would be like, try to work with their design and let's say you're making a logo or something, try to like place it onto common objects that they would expect it to be on. Kind of like build it. Yeah, um, yeah, mock-ups are. Yeah, mock-ups and stuff like that. Because once you see a logo, you're like, that's not going to work. And then you see it on books, and you see, see it on, like, posters, signs, everywhere. It's like, you know what? I'm trying to get this vibe now that it's working. And then you kind of get used to it. And like, well, that's a strong logo. I feel like it works like that. Yeah. Um, this is going to sound really bad, but people are very stupid. <laughs> they are. They, like, it, it blows my mind. Like, you think you've reached a new low of stupidity, and then someone will blow through that floor. Um, and people do lack vision. Some people have amazing vision in one area, but like I used to watch House Hunters, and someone would be like, I don't like this house because the walls are red. Paint the walls! Like you don't have to ignore the house just because the walls aren't the color you like. Um, so yeah, mock-ups are amazing. I've shown a logo before to someone, I don't really like that. And then two days later, I showed them the same logo placed in, in, in an environment, mocked up on something like, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I was like, I showed that to you two days ago and you hated it. <laughs> so just assume people are dumb 
and and try to spell it out as much. I know it's, this is a secret, guys. Don't tell anyone. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> assume everyone is dumb. Because they. Are. It might actually help you vet out who you don't want to work with as well. Right. Right. Yeah. So. It's a good note to end. Yeah, on. a great <laughs> note to end this People right now, dumb. guys. People are dumb. Everyone, not really you guys, dumb. of course. <laughs> but don't tell them that. <laughs> All right, anything else? Or do you guys want to go get lunch? Are you starving? One more question. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening there. <laughs> what is your thought on psychology of color? You know, how do you incorporate that into design or do you use it at all? Wait, was that like you know, psychology? Just, yeah, psychology, psychology of color. color. Just the concepts and the understanding of uh, what, you know, it may attract the eye to, like McDonald's and, you know, yeah. red and yellow, how it, you know, brings about the hunger you know, and hunger and yeah. Anticipation. I don't know. It all plays into yeah your research and like yeah plays into research. I mean there there are basics. Um, there are just basics that you you're adhering to without even thinking of it because we're the same human beings. Like whether you're the client or you're the designer, like there are some things you're going to implement and not even think twice about. But just because of our nature, that was the choice. I mean. Depending on the project and the scope, like there are times, whether it's for the app that we're taking design and applying it to and working with the engineers and we want this button to be clicked on, so it's got to be this great shade of green. People want to go to it and people want to, like green is good for this, blue is good for this. I mean, it. a lot of times you have to think hard and long about it and other times it's just going to happen no matter what. Um, I don't know if that really helps you at all, but it is, it is a very important thing. Like, why do you think most of the social media stuff out there, social media blue? Yeah, that's like, always that's blue. Twitter, oh my God. Facebook, Tumblr, it's all shades of blue because it's an inviting, friendly um, group thing. And, and I think for purple, I can't remember exactly what it was, but for Isaiah, it was, it was an elevated status. It was a, a couple of different things that I mean, that was one of the things why Ted was like, you can do whatever you want, keep purple. Because purple, one, there's not a lot of social media out there that's purple. True. Um, and two, because it represents everything from what we do, that, that higher level of getting and achieving for creators and being paid to do this. And it had a royal kind of expensive, kind of luxurious feel to it. So it, ex it is an important thing. It really is. Some people want that from you out of the work, and you'll just know to implement it without them knowing. Yeah. One of the things that we used to do when I was with Disney, we had we would do rebrands of, you know, sub brands within Disney. Is, and you guys can do this with projects or whatever. Maybe have a subset. I hate to say focus group, but a subset group of people from you know future friends, different types of friends, different types of genres that they like. Put the existing brand or whatever it is that you're going to redo or the same, the color you're trying to get, whatever you're trying to work on or get away from, put that as it is today in front of them, get their thoughts on how it makes them feel. And then when you get in with your, when you're meeting with your client, ask a lot of questions, ask them, ask them what they want consumers to feel when they see their brand or whatever it may be, and then work from there. So research sometimes doesn't have to be in a book. It doesn't have to be on a website. It can be literally with the resources you have around you from your clients to your friends or focus groups. So try to get that type of research out of people too, because they're going to be the ones that are going to be consuming or using it ultimately. Yeah. It's really important to know. Like if, if you know something, know it. Don't be, don't be wishy-washy with how you're explaining something. Like if you know you use this color for a reason, or if your client goes, so why did you, why'd you go that route? Why'd you choose that color? Say definitively, this is why. Um, that same teacher, James Victoria, was in his class one day and he was known for his outbursts. And he asked a question. He asked the girl, well, why'd you do this? She started to say, well, I guess. And he goes, don't effing guess. And he went over to the wall and literally took two hands and just yanked all of our stuff off the wall. And he goes, never guess. Know what you know, what you know, because people will read right through your BS. He's awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. Sounds like a fun class. It, 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 Wait, it, is he the dead one? No, no, no. He's, he's alive and well. Cool. He's, he's a, he's, you'll learn a lot from him. Look up videos, whatever. Yeah, he's Wait, what was brilliant. the name again? James Victory. 
V-I-C-T-O-R-E. Um, I yeah. think we had one more question. It's not actually a question. Um, it was the answer to why all the social media network logos are all blue. Mm -hmm. It's because of blue light. It keeps you awake. Yeah. It keeps you focused on what your thing, so that's why it's like... I thought that was green and yellow. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> all I know is like blue is also really inviting as well. But no, you are right. You are correct, yeah. Cool. Yeah, trust and loyalty. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sounds like oh, yeah. there's a lot of like yeah. research, homework to do for like find out with all these colors and like yeah. tell you. Oh, interesting. I had a friend quite a few years ago that just started working at Apple as a designer, and um, he worked, I think, for the App Store, mm -hmm. and he used a lot of green in his design, and the, the manager was like, Steve will never approve that. He's like, he hates green. Yep. <laughs> so for no reason, like, I don't know, just his distaste for it. Kind of a cool addition to what was asked before, like, environment, like, how do you go about something differently instead of just sitting down and doing design things for design things? I learned color at a job working for a florist. They had a chart. Hmm. And like, that's where I was first introduced to the psychology of color. And I had just sent a girlfriend at the time flowers of a certain color. I was like, oops. Oops. <laughs> like, that was death. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Black. So I was like, oh, she didn't know that. I just thought they were pretty. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's, it's funny how you learn things in non-design places. Yeah, anyway. Very cool. Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys so much for having us and chatting with us, and, you know, check out Isaiah.com. Let us know if you need anything. Yeah. Let's give them a round of applause. Thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have another session after this, so if you can please move to the exits, I will make sure that they go to the hall to answer any extra questions that you want to ask.